Today in this video, we're going to talk about the 2G GSM Sunset. Specifically, I'm going to touch on a couple of topics here. What's happening? What is this 2G GSM Sunset? When is it going to happen? Give you some information about why it's happening, who's going to be impacted, what can we do about it, and what lies in the future? What should we be worrying about to make sure that we don't get impacted similarly in the future again? First of all, the 2G GSM Sunset. AT&T has announced that they will be shutting down their 2G GSM services. The GSM voice services will be removed, GSM SMS will be removed, and more importantly, the IP data services, GPRS and Edge, will be removed. North America is affected. This does not impact international. Carriers overseas are fine for now. And the final point I think which is very, very important here is people are getting confused that all 2G is shutting down. And the answer is no, it's not. 2G CDMA is not impacted. That's provided by other carriers. AT&T does not have 2G CDMA services. They're not shutting that down. It's only the 2G GSM. So let's talk about some dates. When is this happening? First of all, in 2012, there were no new app certifications allowed. Not surprisingly, if you were trying to do a new M2M application, AT&T wanted to avoid having a problem exacerbated, so they have prevented certifications. Earlier this year, in 2013, they also stopped SIM activations, no new accounts for certain customers. Later, they su suspended SIM activation, stopped SIM activations for more people. And recently, I believe that by the end of 2013, they will have stopped SIM activations completely for any new GPRS or even old GPRS edge units. They have a deadline. They have announced this deadline. It's very important to keep that in mind. January 1st, 2017, 2G GSM network will be shut down and turned off by AT&T. That's less than four years away. I want to highlight that. It's less than four years away. If you need to change your product, change the deployed units you have, that's your deadline. You have to get it done. If you don't, those services will stop and your devices will stop operating. You need to keep that in mind. All right. How did they do this? Why did they do this? More importantly, there are a number of factors. Enormous data growth has occurred in the wireless industry and I'm going to talk about that in a few seconds. That data growth is continuing, it's not stopping, not slowing down. There's tremendous competition. AT&T is experiencing competition from other carriers in North America, and therefore they have to be very, very efficient and effective at providing services and providing good services to their customer base. Spectrum, wireless spectrum availability is a big issue. They just don't have enough. In many markets, AT&T doesn't have enough spectrum to support 2G, 3G, and their future 4G technologies. And finally, because GSM is an old technology, goes back many, many years, the spectrum efficiency, as I will show you, just simply isn't as good as the 3G or 4G technologies, and therefore you have to make decisions about turning it off, becoming more spectrum efficient. And AT&T is doing that. I don't blame them. They have no choice. They really have no choice. This needs to be done. Let's look at what's happening in the smartphone industry. This was a presentation by T-Mobile a number of years ago, a couple of years ago, which talked about what was happening from 2009 to 2012. Some of this de detail might be tough to see, but really the important point to be made is that between 2009 and 2012, the amount of data being used and consumed by the smartphone industry just grew by a factor of three. We're not talking small percentages, we're talking about a factor of three. And smartphones have become faster, they're consuming more data. Five years ago to today, 145 times more data being used, 100 times faster devices. The growth is enormous. That's a problem for the cellular industry because they need to accommodate for this. More smartphones out there, more data being consumed. This data growth is not stopping. This is a presentation from Cisco which talked about what's going to happen in the next four to five years. Between 2012 and 2017, they see a greater than 66% compounded growth rate. It goes from about 0.9 exabytes, big term here, lots of data per month, all the way up to 11 exabytes per month worldwide, but a tremendous amount of data growth. And this is not stopping. And beyond 2017, I'm sure it's going to get even higher. So that's an, that's an issue that AT&T had to contend with. Lots of data usage in their network. Competition was stiff. If you go and look at the amount of units, the number of units that the top four carriers in the United States have deployed, the number of units that are out there, over 118 million by Verizon, almost 108 million by uh, AT&T, and the other carriers have appropriate numbers of units based on their size. The point is that they're competing with carriers that either have more spectrum or more efficient technologies for that spectrum. 
and therefore they have no choice but to shut down 2G to allow the use of a better spectrum, better, better more efficient spectrum technology. Let's look at spectrum efficiency for a few seconds here. This is a chart that shows you the differences in spectrum efficiency all the way from GSM through the latest 4G technologies. Okay? The details are not important, but I compare GPRS 5 time slot. This is a particular implementation of GPRS all the way up to LTE. And you can see that going from GPRS to LTE gives you more than 230 times better spectrum efficiency. That's important. So if you have spectrum in which you have GPRS deployed and your data growth has expanded to the point where you need more data capability, more capacity, you're going to want to deploy 3G and 4G technologies to get there. That's important. Finally, what is the impact to the M2M industry? Well, AT&T has an estimated somewhere in the order of 10 to 14 million 2G devices that are out there already. They're going to go off air. At the end of 2016, January 1st, 2017, they will stop working. So you've got to deal with them. Number of major industries are impacted. Security alarm monitoring, which is very, very much so the premier user of the GPRS and, uh, network, will have to change their devices. Industrial measurement units, automotive telematics. There's just a few, not as much as the security, but this is just a few of the, the uh, industries that are going to be impacted that need to deal with it, that need to change their devices to make sure that their services, their customers are not affected. So what do you do? Well, you have basically four alternatives. Your first one is to pick another 2G GSM service provider. In the US, that's T-Mobile USA. Ares can provide services on that, and there are obviously other companies that can do the same thing. You can have 3G HSPA units deployed. Go out there and change your units from 2G to 3G. You could also change your 2G GSM units to 2G CDMA units. As I mentioned earlier, CDMA is not being shut down by the sunset. Only GSM is being affected, and you could go to 4G LTE. There are pros and cons for every one of these. So let me go through some of the pros and cons for each one of these alternatives. If you do a T-Mobile 2G GSM GPRS SIM, you're going to need a service, you're going to need to do a SIM swap. You're going to need to replace the SIM in your unit, most likely. Yes, you will delay the sunset date because T-Mobile has not yet announced any kind of a sunset. AT&T has. On the other hand, it's not forever. T-Mobile will eventually change their 2G GPRS networks as well and sunset that. But you will gain two, three, maybe four, five years of delay. You can buy time. The issue you need to be concerned about is T-Mobile's coverage is just not as good as AT&T in the United States. AT&T has pretty superior 2G GSM coverage. Mm, unfortunately, T-Mobile doesn't quite uh, have the same coverage. But if your product is in a market where T-Mobile provides service, then it's, this is an option. You have to go touch your units. That's important because you need to do a SIM swap. And in certain cases, that might not be as practical as you would like. Uh, and some customers have decided that instead of, if you're going to go touch the unit anyway, it might be better to swap the unit for a next generation product, assuming the, product and, uh, assuming the price of the product is, is sustained properly in the market. Uh, you can go there and change the unit rather than just change the SIM. So that's one alternative. Second alternative, change your technology. Go from 2G GSM to 3G HSPA. Okay? Well, now you need to have a new product. If you don't, don't have a product ready, you need to design one, get it ready, get it into, into production, and deploy it. Unfortunately, 3G HSPA radio costs are going to be higher than 2G GSM. That's a fact of life. It's a more complex technology, uses wideband CDMA rather than the TDMA that GSM uses, and so you're going to have to sustain a, high, a, high, a slightly higher radio cost. Today's coverage for 3G HSP is not as good as 2G GSM. In fact, it's not as good as 2G or 3G CDMA. That's a fact of life, and you have to deal with that. The one concern that I'm warning people about, and to be careful about this, is in certain markets where 2G is working today, there may not be enough spectrum for AT&T to deploy 3G and 4G. They may choose to make those markets a 4G market in the future. So if you swap it out for a 3G, swap out your 2G device for a 3G uh, unit, you may find that when the 2G shutdown occurs, your devices don't work anyway because AT&T has replaced it with the 4G service. Mm, something to worry about. Be aware of what the coverage is. Make sure your units don't lose coverage when the 2G shutdown occurs. Because 3G units have a fallback to 2G, and that's how they would operate in those markets today. All right. Fourth. Alter third alternative, excuse me, 2G CDMA, 1XRTT. Again, you need a new product. If you've been doing a GSM product, now you need a CDMA version of that. The radio cost is a little bit higher than 2G GSM, but definitely not as high as 3G HSPA. 
excellent coverage today. It's probably as good as or better than 2G GSM coverage. So 2G CDMA has legs. 10, year, 10 plus years of longevity still there. Uh, obviously, things could change in the future, but as of this moment, it looks like 2G CDMA will be sustained for quite a while. And if your product lifetime can sus sustain that 10 plus uh, longevity, 10 plus year longevity, great. It's a viable alternative, and we recommend this for some of our customers who are concerned about 3G, both from a radio and coverage perspective. Finally, 4G LTE. Today, radio costs are very high. That's going to come down in time. But the fact is that many, many, many FM applications cannot take on that burden of a higher radio cost. Coverage, not as good yet as 2G, not as good as 3G CDMA, but improving steadily. And in time, within the next two to four years, it may get good enough that a 4G LTE deployment will be of value. Unfortunately, that may occur after the 2G sunset, so it's better not to worry about that, except as a future product evolution. Today, there is no significant roaming between the carriers. And finally, those of you who have been reading my blog will know that LTE has a frequency fragmentation problem, not just in North America or the United States, but worldwide. And you have to have multi-band radios. And multi-band radios are just starting to become available, a little bit more expensive, and in time they will come down in price. So this last bullet point will not be as much of an issue as it is today. What are the future trends? Technology improvements are happening faster and faster and we have to start planning for them. Today LTE is being deployed. LTE Advanced is coming along. Who knows what's going to come along after that. Now, is LTE going to stick around for quite a while? Absolutely. Both of these technologies are approaching some of the theoretical limits, and so I su suspect that 10 plus years, 15, maybe even 20 years of LTE service availability is something we should expect. However, we should expect and plan for faster changes because spectrum pressure will continue. As we use more and more data for smartphones and other applications, you need to worry about the fact that there will be changes happening faster and faster. M2M must plan accordingly. Let me give you a simple little example of that. A customer once came to us and said, you know, I built these devices, I put my GSM GPRS radio in there, and now I need to change the whole unit out. And I said, great. Had you thought about the possibility of taking that radio module and putting that onto a little carrier, which you could stick into your product, so that when you have to make a technology change, you just change the technology of the radio on that carrier, put it back into the rest of the product that works properly with that particular new radio. And he hadn't thought about that. So that's something you need to think about. That's just one example. You need to plan on faster and faster technology change. Your radio module might need to be changed out. You need to plan for that. If you have any additional questions or we can help you with one of the choices which we recommend, which would be either going to a CDMA solution, 2G CDMA solution, or going to a 3G HSPA solution. Those are the most viable options that could be used, particularly in our network. Uh, come talk to us. Phone numbers, website, give us a call. Thank you.